For centuries, throughout the world's different cultures, beads have long been a desired addition to clothing styles. When you see them move, they, they sparkle, they move, you know, they, they reflect the light no matter where you are, which was probably one of the um, principal reasons that beading was so popular in the 20s. Um, because there were, you know, that was the, the beginning of nightclubs, but the dresses still sparkled because they reflected every little bit of light that was there, and they still do. But beading is labor intensive, a time consuming art, and beaded garments are not easily produced. If you look at African beading and, and other forms of beading, whether it's uh, wampum belts and things within native cultures, much of that is, is sewn on a single bead at a time. Bob Haven of Lexington discovered a different style of beading that originated in India, tambour beading, a style that creates the same beauty as traditional beading. He wanted to learn about tambour beading, which is really a beading form with strings of beads. As he studied tambour, Haven discovered what fashion experts in Paris had learned what tambour offered, the efficiency of attaching a string of beads quickly, rather than stitching one bead at a time. It's used in the haute couture industry in Paris because even though it is uh, labor intensive, it is still 10 times faster than doing it by needle and thread. And you can do many, many more things with a tambour hook than you can do with a needle and thread. One obstacle in tambour beading is the artist works from behind the design, with the fabric actually facing down and away from him. The tambour technique, even though you're not seeing it from the surface because you're working on the back of the frame, I always keep a little hand mirror so I can stick it underneath and see how it looks, because if I don't like what I just put in, in three seconds or less, it can all come out without damaging the fabric. The real challenge is the coordination between the tambour hook and the left hand to attain the exactness needed in the beading design. The difficulty with it is that the left hand has to do 99% of the work, and most people are not left-handed. So there is a huge learning curve to get that left hand to be able to manipulate the thread, manipulate the bead, make sure the tension stays correct. There's a lot of um, fine motor skills that are needed by the left hand. At a special exhibition at the Beringer Crawford Museum in Covington, From Rituals to Runways, The Art of the Bead, curator Jason French found the best in show was having Robert Haven. Haven had done much beadwork restoration on dresses worn by the performers Cher. They were the highlight of the show. His talent level is, is just spectacular. He's, he's meticulous. I, I don't know that there's many that are like him. He's, he's had years and years of experience. Bob's work is known worldwide throughout the industry. He is in high demand and is teaching future students of the tambour. But he still loves working with the women of Kentucky in the Miss Kentucky Scholarship pageant, like Haley B. Wheeler, Miss Kentucky 2021, embellishing the gowns and their boots. At the Rosemary Clooney House in Augusta, Heather French Henry is quite confident in trusting her collection of dresses from great movie classics into the hands of Bob Haven. Bob Haven is working on a very special dress that belonged to Arlene Dahl from the movie Here Come the Girls. Rosemary Clooney starred in that with uh, Tony Martin, Bob Hope, and Arlene Dahl. This particular black sequin dress of Arlene Dahl's is very intricate, and it has hand um, beaded sequins throughout the gown. But it had been altered over time, so the center front actually had been cut down a few inches. What we're having Bob do is actually recreate the silhouette of the dress as people would have seen it in the movie. Bob is a master, and when you watch the artistry with which he's able to recreate and bead, it really is a marvel, and you almost can become tranced when you watch that, and how fast as well. So when you've perfected that art and you're able to create it, not only at that level of perfection and craftsmanship, but at the speed with which he does it, it really is a marvel. And for Bob, the work is rewarding.
I think it's the, the speed of it and the fact that, you know, the wow factor when you turn it over and it's like, whoa, that really looks cool. You see something come to life right in front of your face. Enjoy more Kentucky life. Subscribe now.